Hi there everybody, this is Devin Olson from Developer to Developer. Uh, today I want to spend some time showing you my approach to cutting out a basic building as well as its interior in the 3D Studio Max 3D application. To begin, I have a basic block that I built here. Nothing special, um, no real characteristics other than it being a little skinny on one side and a little long on the other. Uh, to begin, let's go ahead and select this object and you'll notice right off the bat it's an edible mesh. I tend to work under edible poly so to convert from edible mesh to edible poly just right click on the model and go to convert to and select edible poly nothing really changes it just switches the mesh mode basically okay so to begin cutting out some characteristics of this building let's use our edge tool and we'll select one of the sides and we can use the ring tool and we'll be able to select all of the edges all the way around and now we can right click and go to connect and this will slice our, our mesh in half according to the edges that we had selected. And it will also auto select the new slice for us. So let's take this slice and we'll move it up. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to use the new real estate or new faces it created for us by using the polygon mode and selecting these faces. So that we can use the extrude tool to extrude these out. I like to work with my extrude tool always set to zero. It gives me a maximum control. So with it set to zero, click OK. And you'll notice nothing has changed. But what it really did is it extruded out an extra set of polygons for us to play with. So now we can switch our transform mode from move to a scale and begin extruding these out. Great. And now it looks like we have a, a sort of a, a roof terrace. So before we go any further, it's really important to create a constant for our scale. If we're going to create any sort of floors to this building, or multiple floors, or any sort of windows or doors, we need to have a constant scale across everything on the inside. So to do that, let's go into our front view uh, by hitting F on your keyboard. And I like to keep my unit set up under a metric of meters. To create my constant, I tend to focus on doors. So doors go everywhere as far as a doorway leading from one room to another or a, a door leading to the opening or the exit of a building. Doors tend to be a great constant across all interiors of a building. So to do that, let's go and create a new box. And with our snap tool, we'll create a two by four we can turn our snap tool off now and this will be our door. This is a, um, a great scale to use for a door. Obviously now we can see that our building is a bit big for our door scale unless we're going to have possibly five floors. So I'm going to go ahead and start scaling this building down a little bit because I was imagining maybe maybe two or three floors. So now let's create an entrance to our building <clears throat> by using our new door and its scale. And to do that, we'll go to the edge tool again and select one of the edges of this building. And we'll use the ring tool again to select all of these sides. Right click, go to connect, and we'll move this new slice down to the top of our door. Let's go ahead and turn our building transparent by hitting Alt X. And we'll go into a front view. And now we'll select the bottom and the new cut of our front of our building and we'll create another cut by right clicking connect and we'll move this to the side of our door and again we'll make another cut and move this to the other side of our door so hitting P for perspective view again and Z to zoom in we can see we have a nice outline around our door so unselect the edge tool and we'll move the door out of the way now and we'll select our building and this time we'll use the polygon tool. With our new cutout selected, we'll go ahead and use the extrude tool again. And we'll move it in slightly. Now notice I don't go all the way in and I start extruding this all out because just like any door frame, it is a frame. So we just take this single extrude, move it in slightly, and then we do an additional extrude. And this one, We'll move out all the way. 
But now you can see that because we made that first extrude, we can select either side of the new extrude and extrude that face out. Move it this way and vice versa for the other side. Now we also need to do an extrude for our ceiling because it's very uncommon for the, the ceiling and the top of the door frame to meet exactly. So with that selected, we'll do another extrude and move it up. Now you're probably beginning to see why I like to keep my extrude set to zero because it gives me maximum control on how I would like to scale or, or move my extrudes versus letting the software determine that for me. So now let's start talking about building out walls for this new extruded floor of our building. So if we hit Alt X again, we can take the transparency off and we can start to see that getting detailed walls or any sort of interior work done with these walls in our way, even while under a transparent mode, is going to get very tricky. So what I like to do is go ahead and start selecting the faces that we would just like to remove or get out of our way for the time being so that we can focus on one area of the model. So I'll go ahead and select all the outer walls and why not? Let's go ahead and select the roof too. Okay. And with that selected, uh, we can go down into Edit Geometry Rollout and hit the Hide Selected. And this will hide the selected faces from the model. Didn't delete anything, they're just hidden from our view. Um, this makes it a lot easier for us to work on a single area of the model without you know, actually exploding and detaching parts and moving things around and having to re-weld everything back together. We'll just clear them out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just start creating maybe a, a, a back hallway through here, as well as maybe some front room right here that has two entrances to it from our front and the back hallways. And to do that, again, we're going to go ahead and select our edges, um, cut, and extrude. But before we do that, let's take time to go ahead and start cleaning up this floor a little bit. Now what I mean by that is for each extrude that we made, we were very careful at making sure everything was cut to scale. And in doing so, we've created additional edges and polys and verts that we probably don't need for this floor to stand up on its own. So what I like to do is go ahead and start selecting the, the edges that we know aren't necessary for this room to hold up. So these edges right here are really not necessary as long as we have our main supporting ones, like any sort of cardboard box. It just needs the, the edges that define the actual box itself. So with those selected, we can go to our Edit Edges Rollout and click Remove. And we'll probably want to do the same thing for our ceiling extrude that we did. So we'll come in here and select all of these. That's only half of the step of cleaning up usually. You'll need to also switch to the vert mode and you'll see that it'll be leftover vertices. Now it's very important that you do it in that order. You need to remove the edges first before trying to remove the vertices, otherwise your mesh will begin to collapse on itself if you try to remove the vertices first. So with the leftover vertices selected, we can now again hit remove in the edit vertices rollout now. And voila. So again, we can, we can clearly see the defining points of the room or the areas that are, are really needed just for the room to stand up on its own and then get rid of the additional uh, slices. So with floor cleaned up, we'll go ahead and select our, our edges again. And we'll connect. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay. Now you might be wondering, wow, what, what is going on here? So when we had these faces selected and then these back faces selected, obviously there is a difference in scale because of the door right here. So the back ones were longer versus the front ones that were shorter. So when I made the slice, 3 co max came up with the calculation of this would be the exact center on these front edges and this would be the exact center on these back edges. So with this new slice introduced here, when we made our second slice, its math was corrected against the center of this slice point and this endpoint and this slice point and this endpoint. So wow, how do we fix that? 
So if we go to our vertice mode, we can select these vertices, and something I like to do is, with all points selected, change your transform tool to a scale, and we'll just scale by one axis. You might need to do this a few times, just to get it perfectly lined up, and then we'll move it into place. Do the same thing for the other side. And this ensures that all points are aligned in this axis. Okay. So now that we have these slices in place, we can go ahead and create some additional slices. Just bring it. Just a few more. see that because we went ahead and fleshed out the alignment of those points with the scale transform that getting these additional cuts is a lot faster because we don't allow the program to try to auto calculate the center for us anymore. So as you can see we've gone ahead and basically cut out to where we'll go ahead and extrude our walls for these two front rooms and upon doing that we'll create a sort of hallway for the entrance that will lead to a back hallway. But I did say that these two front rooms would be accessible by this main hallway and the back hallway. So let's go ahead and start to prepare for cutting out those doorways. So we can go ahead and select the bottom of where this doorway would be on this back hallway and make two cuts. And we'll do the same thing for the top. And we're just kind of rough cutting, not really worried about alignment yet. Do the same thing for our, this side. Obviously, we'll do the same for this side. So before we start extruding these walls, um, again, let's let's get all these new cuts aligned. So we can take from our front view by hitting F these cuts that we've made right here. And again, if at any point you you feel like you're you're making a wrong selection, you might be selecting some additional faces behind it. You can make your selection in the front left or top view, and then come back to perspective view by hitting P, and then hitting Z to zoom in on it, and just kind of see to make sure that yep, that's indeed what we want. So hitting F and then Z again, um, and making sure that we have our transform set to scale, we can scale this by the X axis. Just to ensure that our top slice and bottom slice are perfectly aligned, and we'll do this to both sides. view now and we'll see these cuts here actually let's go to top view just to get rid of the confusion to make sure that we are selecting the right ones so it looks like these guys are in some serious need of scaling So now with everything kind of scaled correctly, let's go ahead and start selecting the polygons for the area that we would like to extrude. So now that we're working on the interior parts of the interior level, let's go ahead and start kind of hiding these spaces that we really don't need, that are kind of gonna be in our way. So by selecting them and going down to the edit geometry rollout, we can hit hide selected again and we're left with just what we need to work with. So we'll select these guys. Okay. And we'll extrude. 
before we start moving the ex new extrude up, let's look at the surrounding area that we'll be extruding over. So if we move this extrude up, you'll see that these back faces here are going to now be covered up with this new extrude. And that's going to create some sort of Z fighting effect. And it will prevent us from actually welding these new extrudes to the ceiling. So to prevent that, I'm just going to select them. And we'll hit delete. And we're also going to do the same thing for our ceiling parts as well. Because as our new extrude comes to the ceiling, this will allow us to weld it to the um, cutout parts of the main ceiling mesh. Notice I didn't select the archways of the entrances because we'll still need those to be in place. They're actually the inverted of what I actually extruded down on the floor. So we'll come into the floor extrudes that we just performed again. Oops. Now we can move this up. So with that moved into place, we can go ahead and hit delete to get rid of the top parts of our new extrude. And we'll go into a front view again by hitting F, going to vertice, and selecting the top vertices of the ceiling, making sure not to select the tops of the door frame. And we'll go to a scale and scale this all by the Y axis. So with that done, let's go ahead and just select all these vertices. With those selected, let's go back to polygon mode, unhide all the faces. Turn off the transparent mode just to kind of see how everything's going to fit together. So we'll go to our weld tool and pull this up. And you'll see before we actually perform a weld, we have 146 vertices selected. And after we have 122. So obviously there were some welding points that needed to happen between the main portion of the ceiling and the new extrude points that we created. And that could only have happened because we deleted the inverted parts of the ceiling and then move the extrude in place of those deleted parts. So we'll click Apply. Okay. So now we can do some slice cleanup. So we can probably select these. Oop, remove. So with our extra slices removed and their unneeded vertices deleted, we can pretty much say that the, the walls for this level are, are pretty much completed. What we can start to think about now is the additional levels um, to the rest of this building uh, and how each floor will be connected and where they'll be connected. So to start doing that, let's go ahead and again hide all of our exterior walls. And let's just take a look at the available real estate we have from a top view. So here's our front entrance, the main hall, our two front rooms that are accessible from the main hall and the back hall. Now we could add a staircase that goes from one level to the next level in either one of these rooms. But having to choose which room, I tend to dislike that. It tends to be more biased on one side of the building as far as having to climb up it. It doesn't feel natural if you put it in one side of these rooms or the other. So. I would suggest maybe we put a staircase in the back hall. In fact, I would suggest that maybe we put one right here. Just for the time being, we're gonna hide the, the ceilings of this floor. So we can kind of get a better picture of what we're working with right here. Okay. So we'll just select the two edges of our back wall of the back hallway, and we'll do a connect and we'll move this on out. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and select these edges again and do an additional connect and move this down as well. 
All right. So let's kind of move these out a little bit. Switch to polygon mode. We'll go ahead and select this poly, and we'll extrude. And just like our front door, we're going to create a frame. Maybe a little bit bigger. And then do an additional extrude for the bottom landing portion, if you will, of the staircase. And then we'll do an extrude again. That's going to represent the incline portion of our staircase. An additional extrude that will represent the top landing of our staircase. We'll switch to top view and we'll get that aligned. Well, let's go ahead and actually add the incline now. So we'll select the uh, vertices for the top portion of our landing and we simply move it up. Let's go to our front view. Now, we don't necessarily want these two to be touching. Um, just like our door frames uh, for the front door or even the staircase, we want to leave a little bit of a gap um, so that when the next uh, floor starts, the, um, the floor of level 2 and the ceiling of level 1 are not Z-fighting or touching. Basically like what we've done with our walls right here, how we left a gap between all of our walls. We want to do the same thing for our next level. So it looks about right. Go back to perspective. And we'll extrude this out. So we'll go to the left view, press L and then Z to zoom, and we'll extrude. And then hit delete. So now let's actually create the individual steps for the staircase. So we'll switch to uh, edge, use ring, and we'll do a connect. And you'll see it added that slice again directly in the center of our incline, which is perfect for us. And we'll go to either side now and do a new connect. Ring, connect. And now when you start getting down to this fidelity of uh, connects, you can actually start doing multiple selections just to speed the process up. So that should be good. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the front view and turn everything transparent. And starting from the bottom, we'll start selecting every other vertice on both top and bottom. Okay, with those selected, let's move by our X axis back and then down. Now bear with me, looks like we just completely did the opposite of creating steps, but we're more focused on the top portion of our incline at this point. So now let's deselect the top vertices that we had selected. And we will now move the bottom vertices back up to a nice 90 degree flesh angle. So that way our top incline is straight while we have rigid stair steps. But before we leave that the way it is, Let's move these slightly back again so that we can expose some of these unneeded um, polys between um, slices. And we'll just need to select each one of these until they're all gone. Okay. We will also need to include a vertice on each one of the straight edges. vertice mode, front view, deselect our newly created vertices, and 
and we'll push our steps back into their 90 degree position. And then we'll just start and scale each step, like so. And now we'll weld. So we'll select all the vertices on the stairs here, as well as the top. And we'll bring the weld tool up. And sure enough, 198 before, 166 after. So we can test our welds just to make sure it actually worked. And we don't have any leftover polys or verts. All right, so let's go ahead and unhide all of our faces now and see how our staircase is doing from the outside. Oh no, that is not what we intended at all. So if we go to our top view, we can quickly fix this by switching to vertice mode and selecting only the vertices for our top terrace and outer wall. And we'll move those out so it encompasses the staircase. And you'll see doesn't protrude anymore, but we are left with a big chunk of empty real estate. It kind of seems funny that there's nothing there, but it wouldn't be too hard if we just extrude this wall out to connect it to the wall of the back staircase. So let's do that real quick. We'll select this wall and we'll hit extrude and we'll move it out until we're about a point we're touching that. And you can see now we've extruded over some faces that we can delete. And we will simply do a quick weld. And that's it. Let's clean up these unneeded slices. Loop, remove, and we'll get rid of the extroverts. Let's make a connection here. Let's hide all of our outer faces one more time. And let's go ahead and begin to build out our second floor. So under polygon mode, we will go ahead and press Control A. And while holding Shift and clicking the Z axis, we can clone our first floor to the second floor. Make sure we clone to element, not clone to object. So let's take a look here. On our first floor, we did not anticipate a flight of stairs to be coming up from, say, the basement. So the wall on the front of the staircase is not cut for another staircase leading up to it. So when we come to our second floor, we run into a problem where this wall is now obstructing the entrance to the staircase for this particular floor. So to fix that, we'll go to our edge mode and we will add a new slice and move this over. So, and we can delete this face. Okay, so now let's go ahead and with our second floor's poly selected, press Control I for invert. We're going to hide the first floor because any floor preceding the second floor is going to have the new cuts that we just created and any additional, you know, windows or terraces that we create on the second floor is gonna be duplicated on the additional floors as well. So we really don't need to see the first floor anymore. So with that hidden, let's go ahead and start creating terrace doorways on our front room of the second floor. Go to the front view. And while holding shift as well, we'll duplicate this over into the X. 
that looks about good. Okay. So let's select our new polygons, um, go into maybe a left view, and extrude to the same distance as our door. Um, you also notice if you go under transparent mode. We don't necessarily need a front door on a second level. So let's go ahead and just get rid of this. We'll select the polys first for the seal. We'll just go ahead and move this down. And we will weld. Maybe we want to add some um, some terraces on the side to the buildings here too, and uh, maybe on each floor we want to have one in the back. So let's go ahead and move our temp doors. Move it down just a little bit. All right, perspective mode, and let's start adding our slices. And while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and start doing the two additional uh, door terraces to the rooms here. Rotate this by 90 degrees. And clone. So we'll move all three of these out of the way. And we look screwed. So now all it's left to do is to duplicate our floor a couple more times. So let's select all the polygons and we will duplicate, clone to element, and we will move it ever so carefully in place. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and unhide all of our faces now. And you can see that maybe we had room for one more floor, but I think, I think three floors should be fine. Or two stories, if you will. So we'll just go ahead and select the roof terrace vertices as well as the outer wall top vertices. And we're gonna move this down. Go to front view. So if we turn vertice mode off and we go and look, we can see we have our last staircase kind of protruding out of the top of the building. And we have two options here. Option one is to just go ahead and at the top floor say, hey, there's no more staircase here and just kind of block this wall off. Or option two, is to turn this into a roof access. And I like that option. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So with the top roof poly selected, we'll hit extrude. Go to a front view. And we'll just bring it down. Okay. Okay. Go to perspective view. And we're going to select roof edge. simply extrude our new poly. Let's give a little bit of a characteristic. Connecting here. Doing an extra extrude, bringing it up, and then something like extrude, move it out, move it out, let's also vertice here. And then we'll connect these two. Now we'll go into a front view and we'll just simply cut out these guys. Alright, now we can come in here and delete this new poly. Um, we may want to move this one in. And weld. Great. We can do a little cleanup possibly here. Okay, now all that's left to do is to cut out the holes for the exterior walls of the building, for the exits of the terraces, and build the actual terraces themselves. And these ones. So now let's go through and just delete these faces. Now let's build the terraces real quick. Go and create a new box. And we'll just bring it up to the build. Like so. to an edible poly, move it out, extrude, scale, move, let's delete this first, insert a vertical. 
missing here. Transfer one there. And then we'll move and extrude down. Obviously, we can come in here and clean this up, the size a little bit, push this out, and we can make the edges a little taller, because most humans tend not to want to fall over a terrace wall. Um, then we'll come in here and we'll just delete these back faces, and we can weld now. So there's one. We're just going to go ahead and duplicate this up. And we'll select our main building and just begin attaching the terrace objects. And we don't really need our temporary door scales anymore. And that, believe it or not, is a complete building, ladies and gentlemen. And with any sort of practice, you can begin to take this and make something like this. Thanks very much.